My name is Carissa Pfeiffer, Library Specialist at Buncombe County Special Collections. This video will give you an overview of what you'll find in your oral history backpack from Buncombe County Public Libraries and how to use the equipment. You'll also find lots more in the oral history manual, technical documentation, and other resources both in your backpack and online. Inside your oral history backpack you'll find one small case with a digital voice recorder, pretty much the most important part, a second case with accessories including a tripod, USB cable to move files onto your computer, and SD card adapter, headphones case with headphones and also a windscreen, plus in the side pocket we've included some cleaner. In the front pocket you've got thank you notes, question cards to give you ideas for interviewing, and a notepad. And then we've also got some manila folders that give you more extensive guidelines about conducting oral histories, an operation manual and technical documents for this device, and all the forms that you'll need if you choose to donate your interview to Buncombe County Special Collections. So first we'll go over the basic anatomy of the recorder. On the top is the all-important microphone to record the sound. You can use it just like this or place the windscreen on top to help muffle sounds like wind. This big button in the center is how you start and stop recording. And these buttons are used to find a file you've recorded and play it back, pause, rewind, fast forward, and stop playback. During recording, you can also use the pause button to pause and restart recording during an interview. For instance, if you or your interviewee needs to take a break or if they wanna tell you something is off the record. The row of buttons above them are used for several purposes corresponding to the settings and functions shown on the screen right above them. And the dial on top is the very important gain knob which sets basically the volume recording levels for the sound that you're capturing with your device. You'll want to adjust that so that the peak levels here stay around the middle of the screen. On the right side of your device is the on off switch. You'll slide that toward the power button icon to power the device on and off. The switch also has another function which you can use if you want to. Sliding to hold will disable the buttons on the front while you're recording, just in case you want to make sure that they don't get accidentally pressed during the interview scenario. The button above that lets you delete files that have been recorded onto the SD card, which is stored here. And at the bottom of the right side is the port for your USB cable, which you'll use to transfer files to your computer. On the other side is where you plug in your headphones when you're monitoring your audio or listening to the files you've recorded and a volume button for adjusting that playback volume. So before you turn the recorder on, you'll want to make sure that you have a micro SD card in the right side compartment of the recorder to store your files and batteries here in the back. We've got those things, so now we're ready to turn it on. So what we'll do is slide this power button towards the power icon. And now the screen will light up and it will take a few seconds to get to the main screen. Now here's what you'll see right when you turn it on. At the top is the name of the last file recorded. This will always go up incrementally by a number, so it's zoom 0001, 0002, 0003, and so on. And if the SD card is empty, it'll say no file. Next to that is the battery life indicator. You don't want to run out of battery life while you're in conversation, so when the charge gets low, you can replace the batteries or switch to outlet power using the USB cable and adapter in the accessory case. And you should see this SD icon indicating that the micro SD card is in the device and ready to record onto. Right now, the time counter shows you the remaining available time to record at the current settings. And finally, these settings which are controlled by the button underneath. What you see on the screen are the settings that we recommend, but there's more information in the provided operation manual if you think you might need to adjust anything. All right, now we're gonna go through actually recording audio. So you'll press the red button to start recording. You'll see immediately that the file name goes up by an increment and your time now shows the time that has elapsed in the recording. 
If you pause the recording, you'll see that the status icon changes from recording to paused and the timer stops going up. And then you can resume recording by pressing that again. Pausing will also create a mark in your file and you can also do that manually. It just makes it easier to find a specific point in the file later on. And then you can end recording by pressing that center button again. Once your file is recorded, you'll want to play it back. You just use these playback buttons to navigate between files. You'll see the file name change there to play or pause, rewind or fast forward, and stop. Now you'll want to delete any test recordings that you do or your regular recording after you've put it onto your computer. And you'll do this by just navigating to the file name that you need to delete make sure you've got the right one, then pressing the trash can icon on the right side using this row of buttons to select delete and confirm. Now your file is gone and you have a little bit more time remaining to record. The files you do want to keep, you'll want to put onto your computer and preferably also copy to a backup location. So to do that, you'll take this USB cable provided in the small accessory case, plug it into the right side of the recorder, and plug the other end into your computer, the USB end here. Now when you turn it on, you'll see two options. Choose card reader, which allows the computer to use the recorder just as a storage device, which will then show up in your file management system. So you'll just navigate through those folders until you get to your file, copy it to where you want it to live, and then once it's copied, you can also change the file name to something more descriptive than the default, something like the name of the person you interviewed or the date or a combination of those. And then you can also embed other details if you would like to into the file so that it stays with it. Another option is to actually remove the micro SD card from the device and you'll probably need this card adapter since your computer doesn't have a slot small enough for the micro SD card. You'll just take it out by pushing it in and pulling it out here. And it's a little bit fiddly, but it fits in to the adapter here. And you slide that into the adapter slot or the SD slot on your computer. You do run the risk of losing the card, and like I said, it's a little fiddly, so we really don't recommend using this method, um, but using the USB cable method instead. You'll also find a few accessories in your backpack, which are totally optional to use, but might make it easier for you to record good quality audio. First, in the large headphones case, of course, there is a pair of headphones. Use these to monitor your audio or listen to recorded files, and like we mentioned earlier, these just plug right into the left side. In that same case is a windscreen to pop right over the microphone part. This can help muffle wind or vocal plosives. And it just fits over just like that. Nice and snug. Next, the smaller accessory case also has a tripod. The knob on the side adjusts the angle at the top by loosening and tightening so that you can place it where you want, angled how you want. The tripod legs come out and you um, screw the tripod onto the back of the recorder, that section on the back right there. You just want to screw it in and then use that knob on the side to make sure that it's nice and tight and that that angle isn't going to change and it's not gonna fall down. So then you'll be able to set that down right between you and the person that you're interviewing so that you can record hands-free. Some less technical add-ons you'll find in the front pocket of your backpack are cards that you can use to help set up the questions for your interview. Uh, which you'll want to prepare in advance. You don't have to, of course, use these exact ones. Um, there are also lots more question ideas and a lot more tips on planning and conducting the interview in your oral history manual in your backpack. 
We've got also um, thank you cards for you to send to your interviewee afterwards. And a uh, notepad, and there's also pencils for taking notes. You'll want to remember to write down and to state at the beginning of the audio some important details, such as the name of the person or people that you're interviewing, the name of the interviewer, which will be you, the date that the interview is taking place, the location of the interview, and anything else that you think might be important to mention for context or notes during the interview to help you with spellings for later on when you transcribe it, or to remind you of topics that you're going to want to return to later on in your interview. Before you return your backpack to the library, you can remove any sheets that you've used in this notepad. So I hope this video was helpful. As you go off and get started, remember to familiarize yourself with the equipment you'll be using as much as possible to check your storage and battery life and to prepare a quiet location in advance for recording that won't be subject to distractions or background noises. And more than just the technical side which this video covers, please familiarize yourself with the rest of the resources and tips we've provided on preparing and conducting an oral history interview that's both informative and respectful. If you do have any questions, you can refer to the folders in your backpack, and you can also always get in touch with us here during our open hours at Buncombe County Special Collections. Thank you so much for your interest in contributing to local history.